Hey guys. Thank you for joining me on another ASMR. Turn up the volume so I can hear. I'm so excited today because we're going to be doing a few really fun things. I'm going to be showing you guys some of my favorite books over here. So I thought it would be really fun to show you guys some of my favorite books that I've been reading during COVID-19. I got really, really into reading again, which is so exciting. I actually went to university for comparative literature and culture, so I am actually a writer. And what I write is normally horror or psychological thrillers. But I found what I really enjoyed reading during this time specifically were more of self-help, life-affirming sort of books. There are a few fictional books in here, like this one. I might start with this. So this book right here is called The Flick by Annie Baker. And it's also the winner of the Pulitzer Prize. The Pulitzer Pulitzer Prize. It's kind of a tongue twister. It's the winner of the 2014 Pulitzer Prize for Drama, which is great. So this book is a play. I haven't really read many plays since high school, I'd say. I didn't really read that many in university. So, when I went to the bookstore and saw that this one was on the recommended shelf, I thought I had to read it. I was really excited, actually. This play is about a few employees at a movie theater. As the movie theater is in its transition stage from using classic um, projections, so an old projecting system, to a new projecting system, and it touches on romance and friendship and the issues of technology and how changes, you know, vintage styles and techniques, and how there's definitely pros and cons to that. So, this book, this play, rather, was really, really good. I read it in one sitting, probably took me a couple of hours only, and it's a great read, so easy, so fun, and I really recommend it if you're looking for something to read right now, and you like plays. So that was The Flick by Annie Baker. The next series of books that I want to speak about are the Tall Tech Wisdom Collection. These books were absolutely life-changing for me. So, these are the Four Agreements Tall Tech Wisdom Collection by Don Miguel Ruiz, featuring the Four Agreements the mastery of love, and the voice of knowledge. 
I also have the fifth agreement right here. So this is the full collection of Tall Tech Wisdom books. This is just an amazing series on self-mastery and it specifically touches on Tall Tech Wisdom, their ancient wisdom on how to be free in the mind and find inner peace. It's really amazing. I've talked about these books a few times on my channel already. And if you haven't seen that, I wanted to make sure that you did. I'm so glad that I found these books. I actually found these right after my childhood pet passed and I started reading them right after and it really helped me gain this kind of perspective of positivity on the whole thing instead of just having a lot of negativity and sadness within. So, if you're someone that's currently dealing with something, this could be really helpful for you to read. For example, the agreements include be impeccable with your word, don't take anything personally, don't make assumptions, and always do your best. And those are, you know, things that are pretty much common sense, I would say, but actually putting them into practice can be really difficult in theory. So this book helps you do that way easier. And I just want to thank these books for helping me so much, especially during COVID. You know, there's so much uncertainty in the air and just with what's going on in general, and I'm sure you guys feel it as well. And these have just reminded me that as long as I'm always doing my best and trying my hardest for myself and being honest to myself, then I'll get to where I need to be in time. And so will you. So I really recommend this series of books to you guys. Let's see. So, the next book is called Adulting, How to Become a Grown-Up in 535 Easy-ish Steps. So, this book is a little different because it's not ancient wisdom at all. In fact, it's quite modern wisdom, I would say. My mom actually sent this book to me when I turned 21. And I actually really enjoyed reading it, and it has a lot of great advice in it. If you're someone like me, perhaps that is just starting out in their adult life and doesn't really know what they're doing and is just kind of figuring it out as they go, this can be really helpful. For example, it talks about getting your mind right, being domestic, finding an apartment, furniture, cleaning, cooking, how to fake it until you make it, which I really believe in, you know, P 
people only see what you put out. So if you choose to put out positivity and you radiate what you want, you will attract that because people will automatically assume that that's what's happening in your life, if that makes sense. And it talks about how to get a job, how to save money, love, family. So it's kind of just a good self-help book with little tips, little tips and tidbits. I think it's a good book to just have around in general, just in case I ever need to come back to it for a tip or some resource. So thank you, Mom, for sending this to me. I really like it. I think it's a great book. JJ Abrams says, get this book and grow up. <laughs> Which is funny because I actually met JJ Abrams as a child when I screen tested for Super 8, the film. So, gotta take his advice. <laughs> okay. I think this one is my personal favorite that I've discovered. I'm sure several of you have probably seen this book before because it has such a discernible cover. It's a really beautiful graphic. This chair right here. It says, remember, be here now. Be here. So, this book is called Be Here Now by Ram Das, and Be Here Now is, it's kind of hard to describe what exactly this book is. I would say it's kind of like a spiritual, it's one man's spiritual journey, what he went through, and what he learned in the process. So you can see that it's split up into different sections. The beginning is Ram Dass's spiritual journey and he writes about meeting his guru and his family and such and I thought it was very interesting. And then he talks about how he got to the state of knowing and the many different attempts that he did and took, the different paths he took. And he says that finally, when he met his guru, he was able to actually know. So in the middle of this book, this whole brown part here is so amazing. It's basically just his teachings and what he'd like to pass on, I guess. So he talks about being present and how to do that. And it has a lot of amazing illustration in it. And you read it like this, actually. So it's very unique. I've never ever seen a book like this and the very back of the book includes several different things such as cuisine that he recommends meditation techniques mantras you can say to yourself, exercise, and then at the end here, he actually 
recommends several other books that you can read that are similar and might achieve the same thing and I was so excited because I've actually read a lot of the books that he recommends. Um, we have the Bhagavad Gita, which I recently purchased but have yet to start, but I'm very excited about. And yeah, we have a lot of books here that I actually read in university. One of my professors had several different courses and a lot of them were about this, about self-help and meditation and self-discovery, I would say. So, yeah, I'm really excited that I already had that um, sort of, you know, experience given to me. It allowed me to discover other ones that I really loved. I think this book isn't going to be for everyone. It's very specifically, you know, spiritual and if you're maybe not as deep into spirituality yet, it might be hard to digest or even silly, but I, in the past few months, have gone really very spiritual and I've, I've never really considered myself to be that spiritual. I definitely had an interest in it, but with the growing need to stay indoors, I kind of became very introspective and so I also became very spiritual and meditation. I know I say that a lot to you guys, but I think everyone should do it. It's benefited me so, so much. And books like this are kind of a tool in getting you there to that meditative state and knowing what you should do. I do think meditation is very specific to each person. Everyone's going to have a different way of getting there, but books like this where the author shares their personal story on how they achieved that can be really helpful to figure out your own way. So I really want to recommend this book to you guys. I'm so happy that I found So, now we have this little book right here. So, this is Deepak Chopra. The Seven Spiritual Laws of Success, A Practical Guide to the Fulfillment of Your Dreams. So I actually wish that I had read this one more early on in my spiritual journey because I discovered this book after I had read the Tall Tech Wisdom book and after I had read Be Here Now. I really do like this book because I think it's a good, you know, more condensed summary of all that these already say in depth. So if you want just a more condensed, easy to digest kind of beginner's guide on all of this, I really recommend this. It is in no means really beginner, but when you compare it to books like this that are very personal and in-depth about a specific journey, I think this is a little more applicable to everyone and it just has seven laws that you can follow. 
So I think it's very similar to the Tall Tech Wisdom books in that it has specific things that you can try out. Be Here Now is, like I said, a very personal story about one man's spirituality with his own teachings to you, but it doesn't have like very specific outline steps. So if you're someone that does better with specific steps, I really recommend this book to you. I think Deepak Chopra is just amazing if you want to get into spirituality. He's a big name, um, along with Eckhart Tolle, which I'm going to show you a book by as well. But, yeah, basically, within this book are several different laws and how they help you and how to follow them. And, yeah, I think it's, it's really really great. It has these sort of mantras that you can say or if you think them a lot it might help like today I will lovingly nurture the god or goddess in embryo that lies deep within my soul. I will pay attention to the spirit within me that animates both my body and my mind. I will awaken myself to this deep stillness within my heart. I will carry the consciousness of timeless, eternal being in the midst of time-bound experience. Number two says, I will make a list of my unique talents. Then I will list all the things that I love to do while expressing my unique talents. When I express my unique talents and use them in the service of humanity, I lose track of time and create abundance in my life as well as in the lives of others. Number three says, I will ask myself daily, how can I serve and how can I help? The answers to these questions will allow me to help and serve my fellow human beings with love. I think that's really nice. I think something I've personally realized when I became a little more spiritual and others around me have realized about me as well is that you just start to look at your life and everything with more of an earthly view and start to realize that the way you think is your biggest friend or it can also be your biggest enemy in life. And being able to master your consciousness and your mental state and just the way you're thinking about things be such an important tool in productivity and confidence and just the way you look at the world and I think when I've started the spiritual journey I've noticed and other people have also noticed that I've become more positive and accepting and open and just flowing so yeah, I'm really, really glad that I did. And I, I feel like everyone should get into their spirituality. So, let's see, what can I show you here? This is one I haven't started yet, but I, I found this in... Um, the sale section of a bookstore and I thought it was really interesting just like opening it up and looking inside. This is by Janice Hinshaw Bayless, PhD. And it's called Sex, Symbols, and Dreams. Dreams are always something that have really, really fascinated me. I took a course in university called 
the literature and culture of dreams and in that class we learned to do lucid dreaming, to keep a dream journal, and we also attended a dream conference that was online where people from all over the world would come and talk about their dreams and what they thought they meant and it made me realize that our dreams are really, really important and the images and messages that are presented to us in our dreams often reveal a lot about our subconscious and what we're thinking and what we're worried about so it's very important to look at your dreams and understand them so I bought this book because it says right here that it's about how dream mind chooses the images that it uses and so inside it has a lot of text about different dreams and little diagrams so I'm quite excited to read this book Another book I read about dreams, well, I've, I've read a few because obviously during that course we had a few different books that we had to read, but I no longer have those texts, so I'm going to have to go back and find out what those were and reread them. It's been a few years, so I think it's a good time. But back then when I was in that course I had purchased this book to analyze my dreams and to have a text to assist me in that this book right here by Tony Crisp Tony Crisp, Tony Crisp, Tony Crisp that's a great name <laughs> imagine being called Mr. This is the Dream Dictionary, an A to C guide to understanding your unconscious mind. So you can see a trend with the books that I'm recommending you. And this book is so cool because it's literally like a dictionary of dreams. So. A dream is a mirror revealing your deepest self. So it does describe what exactly we can learn from our dreams. But then, as you get a little further in, you'll see that is literally formatted like a dictionary so it'll have terms like baby or maybe a term like airplane different images that you might see in your dream and under that you can read what that image might have represented in that dream which I think is really interesting so for example we have airplane and it has this whole long thing about different meanings associated with an airplane appearing in your dream. Let's see. Let's read. Let's read one, right? Hmm. There's so many. Let's see. Well, there's different foods. So it says soup. This might be sustenance, sustaining, or strengthening emotions 
but it depends what is happening to the soup. If spilt, it can suggest making a mess of things, or feeling insecure about a social event. Offering soup depicts a giving of yourself, of your care and affection. The soup in a saucepan might be showing you how you have gathered many things together to nourish yourself or someone else, so nourishment for body or soul. Let's see. So, here it says, Dreams about the end of the world, or fantasies about the end of the world. So, these depict the powerful and threatening inner and outer changes that accompany major life transitions and social changes. The transition from childhood to adolescence, for instance, is the end of the world that existed for the whole lifetime of the individual up until that point. Such points of transition occur several times in the life of anyone who dares to grow and adapt. Menopause for women, the leaving home of children, the loss of a job, retirement, loss of a partner or health, can all be represented by the end of the world or a world. So, basically, it is literally a dream dictionary. And if you're trying to study dreams and just sort of understand better what your dreams might mean, this is a really, really great text for that. If you guys want me to do a video specifically on dreams, I'd actually love to. So, let me know if this is something you're interested in hearing more about, as I have a lot of (laughs) unused knowledge on the topic. (laughs) Thank you to my professor, Lauren Goodman, for helping me learn all of this. Let's see. So, as I already told you, I recently purchased the Bhagavad Gita. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. If I'm mispronouncing it, I do apologize, please advise me on how to say it right. Bhagavad Gita. This translation is by Graham M. Schweig, and it's a new translation. It says, The Beloved Lord's Secret Love Song. So, the Bhagavad Gita is often thought of as the Bible of India. I'm reading the back here. It's one of the most important sacred texts of the world. So, it's poetic. It explains foreign concepts and terms. It has a Sanskrit text inside of it as well. I have not begun this yet, but I'm quite excited to do so, as it was recommended by Ram Das in Be Here Now, like I said before. And it's written in a sort of verse like this. And this translation comes with footnotes that helps describe words that you might not know or terms that 
need further explaining. So I'm really excited to read this. I am not religious at all, but all these texts, what they have in common is a theme of we have so much power within us as humans and what I believe, at least personally, is that each of us is God within. So our thoughts and what we choose to believe and what we choose to do and put out, that can change our lives so much. And we are our personal gods. That's at least what I believe. And I respect everyone's religion. Everyone has the right to believe what they want. But so do I, and personally, I believe that God just refers to the self as a higher being that has consciousness mastered and has mastered their thoughts so much so that they can change their lives completely and be God for themselves. So. I'm not really sure if this is a strictly religious text, but from my understanding at least, a lot of religious texts, like the Bible as well, you know, as explained by a lot of these other books, especially the Taltec Wisdom books, can be read by those who don't necessarily actually believe God as a higher being that's separate from us, you can read things like the Bible or other religious texts with the understanding that by God, they actually mean the self. So I think these texts explain it a little better than I do, but from my understanding at least, that's how I think of when I think of religion. So I'm not sure if that would make me atheist or what, but I do believe God refers to the self. So I'm really excited to read this one. I'm not really too sure what to expect. is The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle and this is another personal growth slash spiritual text Eckhart Tolle is a spiritual teacher and he has a YouTube video um, a YouTube channel which I actually recommend where he talks about different spiritual practices that you can put into practice to help you get to a better state of mind. So I begun this book a few weeks ago, but I got busy so I couldn't finish it. So I can't really tell you exactly what it's about or what I think of it yet. I will have to give you guys a review later on. But from what I've seen, it is basically kind of like the Toltec Wisdom books or like Deepak Chopra's The Seven Spiritual Laws of Success. And it basically is a guide to 
different things in life and how you can look at them differently to benefit you and the people around you. So for example, chapter one says, you are not your mind. Chapter two is about consciousness and the way out of pain. And under each chapter is different sections. So for example, chapter three says, moving deeply into the now. And the sections include, don't seek yourself in the mind. And the delusion of time. Nothing exists outside of the now. So, yeah, I'm, I'm very excited to begin this book as well. I think the main reason I've gotten so deep into these books is. You know, growing up as a child, I was always very spontaneous and living in the present, but I always had a tendency of thinking, when I get there, when I do that, things will be good, or when I look like that, or when I think like that, things will be good. But books like this are really good for reminding yourself that there is no when or if, it's only now. That's the only moment that exists. The past and the future are just stories we tell ourselves, and there's really no use in punishing ourselves over and over for mistakes in the past or future anxieties that we may have. The only thing we can do is wake up every day and try our best that day. So I'm trying to stop thinking like that. Stop thinking like when I get there, things will be good. I want things to be good now, even if they're not certain, even if nothing's guaranteed. It's all about finding ways to make every single day count and do everything with intention and with love and with care. And that way, every single moment is filled with you doing your very best and trying. So I'm really trying my hardest to be more have a more positive outlook on the present moment because I think a lot of us, especially right now, look at the present moment in fear and in worry and despair and we might look at the past and think, oh, life was so good then, things were so different and we might look at the future and hope oh, I hope it'll be like this, or I hope this won't be happening, or I hope this will be happening. But what the point that I'm trying to get at is there's only this very moment, and how you look at it is very, very important. This very moment is all you have. The past and the present in the future. Sure, you have to think of them all. The past and the future are things that we inevitably, as humans, are going to think about and are going to reminisce on. But as long as you realize that now is the most important and now is what you should cherish, then I think you'll be okay. I've never been a sort of person to be very present and living in the now. Like I said, I was always worried about the future, but I think now more than ever, we need to learn how to enjoy the present moment, even if it doesn't feel perfect, even if it's not what we wanted in particular. So. 
because of all these texts, I got very inspired, like I said, to get more into spirituality and to meditate more. So, this very last thing that I'm going to show you is my spiritual journal that I've begun not too long ago. It started in my previous journal, but then I realized it would be best to separate them. So, for example, in my previous journal, I used to draw and write out different manifestations for example we have this one now, a lot of these are super personal so I don't want to reveal too many because it is my diary but enlightened April <laughs> black hole April April in love and So, I got inspired by those ideas and I created a whole separate journal of things to remember spiritually. Like, for example, this is one page that I can share with you because it's not super personal. But this was on the new moon, seven. September 17th, 2020, and I usually do these entries during new moons or full moons. And this one says, Nothing more can come of it now, so hush. Focus on you and doing what you came to do. Your prayers have already been heard. Your manifestations are on their way to you. You only need be patient. And I wrote down some angel numbers that I had been seeing a lot, like 1111, 1212, 414, 333, 444, and 111. And this right here is a pool, a little wave pool that I drew. And I wrote down here in your mind is an immense pool, each thought a turbulent wave. A messy mind means more waves. Now focus on that one manifestation, picture it. And on the next page, I wrote about that manifestation and just visualizing it. So... Yeah, I can't really show you too much more inside of here because it's, like I said, extremely, extremely personal and descriptive and detailed, but the main takeaway is, I think, if you're watching this, everyone should journal. And journaling is a good way to get your anxieties or even desires about the past and the future out of your system. You write them all down in detail. As soon as you feel anxious about something that has happened or is going to happen, write it down. And then, once you're done writing, when you shut this, don't worry about it anymore. Let it go. Nothing else can come of it. Once you close your journal, be in the now and focus yourself on the present moment. So I think that's going to be all for today's video. I really hope you guys enjoyed hearing more about my take on spirituality and some of the texts 
that I recommend. I know you guys have been heavily requesting a video on spirituality, but I think it's so hard to condense it into one video, so I wanted to focus this one on several different texts I think would be good for you to read if you're interested in starting a spiritual journey. So, yeah, I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video, and sleep well. I will see you guys in the next one, and if there's any specific videos you'd like to see me do, please let me know in the comments. And I hope you guys have a lovely, lovely little sleep. Thank you for watching.